Natalie. It's nice to have you here. Thanks for coming. Um, I've seen your work like on on Instagram, mm -hmm. social media, and it's great. It's yeah. like it's spectacular. Um, how how did you get into photography? Like, where did that all start? So when I was younger, maybe about like 10 or 7, my father had always equipped me with like a disposable camera or one of his older film cameras that he never ended up using. And so I had always had a camera on my body and on my person at all times, even when I was at school and back at home, I would take pictures of my dogs. And so always being equipped with that sort of creative atmosphere that my father had really instilled in me and my mother as well, it really sort of set me up for the rest of my life. I mean, having a camera by me and like taking pictures was just something that I always loved to do. And I mean, it's like not really separate from my life. It's not really separate from what I do. It's just part of who I am and, and um, I think it always will be. And I think, oh, was it? I think junior year of high school, I finally bought my own camera, my own SLR. And I had no intention of being big with photography or like doing, you know, weddings or portraits like I do now. I just bought the camera because I wanted to take pictures of the life around me. And it wasn't until the senior year of high school where I actually started to get a little more recognized for some of the work that I was posting. And so that's when people started saying, hey, like, can you do my senior pictures? Can you do my headshots? And I said, sure, like, that sounds fun. And I guess since then, it's just sort of been escalating and rolling into this sort of bigger ball, this bigger hamster wheel of creativity. And I just, I, I couldn't be more grateful. So. so, like, your time as a child kind of, like, prepared you to be able to like kind of evolve from just taking pictures around the house to actually like taking pictures of other people and kind of like putting yourself more out there. In doing that, was there ever like, was it a smooth transition or was there ever like a moment where it was like, okay, this isn't just me playing around with a camera anymore. This is going to turn into something bigger. So that's interesting you say that because I would say that that sort of pivotal point has most recently happened within the actual like past couple of months. Um, right now I'm a full-time student at Arizona State University and I'm currently double majoring in global studies and anthropology and the reason why I had, well there's a couple reasons why I had majored in something entirely different than photography or any sort of art or design major and that was because I wanted to just learn something a little more academic for myself, something a little bit more tangible, just in case I did want to go into a professional track. And so I had never, again, sort of had the intention to make photography or this creative lifestyle my full-time career as a, as a potential job. And it wasn't until maybe about a couple of months ago, I just woke up at the epiphany of maybe I can turn this into something a little bit more bigger and professional and maybe marry the interests of anthropology and photography together. And so um, I would say, yeah, it has been a smooth transition, but it's been sort of an abrupt transition as of late. So, Yeah, I, I would have to agree. Like, it seems like it's been abrupt because you have thousands of followers on Instagram and your, your work is fantastic. Do you, where do you find your inspiration, like, for your shots? I think... Well, I find inspiration in most anything, honestly. Like, it could be my favorite song, a movie that I had just watched over the weekend, or an old issue of National Geographic magazines. You know, I, I literally can find inspiration in anything because it's just how my mind works. Um, but I think what, like, is my favorite type of shoots and sort of what keeps me going um, and sort of what puts me out of my comfort zone, if you will, is really meeting new people and traveling and doing sort of my own adventurous lifestyle that is shown within my photos. At least that's what I sort of aim to show within my photos. And so keeping that lifestyle, keeping inspired constantly is what um, really holds the foundation of what my photographic style is really. So. so you talk about like kind of portraying a lifestyle and that's kind of like where you draw a lot of your inspiration. Uh, what what kind of like lifestyle, like how would you describe this lifestyle that you live and do you gear your photos to that like particular audience that might share the same lifestyle? 
So lifestyle is sort of a, a really like broad term for photography. It just basically is, is showing like candid shots of whatever that lifestyle may be. So the lifestyle, you know, quote unquote, that I like to sort of portray is this really slow living, this adventurous, this, um, this vibrant and colorful and really spontaneous sort of lifestyle, this this day-to-day -day life that um, doesn't really follow any sort of routine, that holds a sort of special uniqueness to it. And um, I know that sounds really general, but I think that, again, that's what sort of keeps me on my toes a lot of the times. Um, and that is sort of the audience that I like to reach to because I feel like when a person looks at my work and they can relate to it, I think I've already done like my job. I, I like to be able to showcase work that relates to, to, to the audience. It just makes it a little bit more special and a little bit more personal for my, for my audience and for my work. Um, yeah, so you talk about how you work with a lot of people. You get to know a lot of people. Um, are you ever afraid of like what was once like this blissful and like you know passion of photography when you were younger? Are, are you ever afraid of like losing that to becoming like okay, this is kind of like a job now. This is not what it used to be. That's a great question. Cause yes, I do. That's something that I fear uh, all the time, and I think. In order to avoid that, especially like now trying to get into photography as a full-time career potentially, or at least sort of the bulk of my career, um, or at least the bulk of my income, um, I think it starts with really just only shooting what you love and just only shooting what you're really passionate about and really putting forth your time and energy and money into projects that are worth it. Because I've caught myself a couple of times throughout a couple, you know, a couple of years working with certain brands or companies or people that I just really wasn't interested in, and I could feel that, and that posed as a bit of danger to me. And I, that's when I sort of pulled back and just took time for myself for a little bit and realized what I really love, what I really love to do, and what I want to put forth that energy towards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. In, in this time, do you feel like your your interests have stayed the same, like, you know, ever since you were younger, or have they kind of evolved as you've gotten better at photography, worked with different people? Like, do you kind of stay true, or do you find it, like, kind of changing as time goes on? I would kind of say, honestly, that it's been the same for a very long time. When I was younger, you know... I love to go hiking and go backpacking and to travel and to meet new people and experience new cultures especially, but I think it's involved a little more um, intellectually because now that I'm in college over at ASU and I'm doing global studies and anthropology, I'm learning more than just the fun you know, hiking and backpacking adventure, you know, I'm learning what it means, what culture even means. I'm learning the aspects of humanity and I'm diving deeper into philosophy and religion and politics and that's super exciting for me. And I think that if I were to sort of incorporate those interests and marry those interests with photography by being a visual anthropologist or by being a photojournalist, that would be super exciting. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a goal, but you know. I'm, I'm sure, sure you're well on your way. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so. What have been some of like your most favorite or memorable photo shoots? Hmm. I think, well, the first thing that comes to mind is, um, the one thing that comes to mind, I think, is sort of this, this photo that I had, that I took in Belize. It was two summers ago. I had done some photography workshops with the children at Youth Empowerment Center in Belize. I did an internship. It was for my school. It was really awesome. And one of the days we had taken the kids out um, on a boat ride to this little island just outside of the mainland. It was called Snake Key Island. And I remember we were on the boat and we were riding ourselves over to the island and it was thunderstorming out. And I just remember feeling this sense of wow this is exactly where I should be right now you know in the middle of the ocean in a thunderstorm 
And as soon as we get to the island, we, you know, the kids were running all over the place and I had my camera safe kept under my little jacket. And I just remember sort of being a little fly on the wall and taking pictures of the kids enjoying this thunderstorm while they're on this island. And it just, I think that was the moment that it really set in for me that I, I, I really like to capture this sort of candid, these candid moments. And um, especially, you know, getting to travel, sort of, you know, those, those layers, like I was saying, like sort of marrying these interests. Um, I, I just remember that being very, very prominent. And that's definitely the sort of type of like photography style that I wish to continue to do. I, I hope I get to continue doing more sort of candid, exciting shots like that. So those kids didn't know that you were going to take a picture of them? No. I mean, they knew I had my camera, but they didn't, you know, they were busy playing and swimming and I was just sort of back. So I have to ask, did you know you were, like was the plan to take a picture or was this just kind of like a spur of the moment, spontaneous, like okay this would make a great shot? I just kind of knew intrinsically that this would make a good shot, but I always have my camera on me for that reason. I always have my camera on me, even if it's like going over to a friend's house. Those are some of my most favorite shots. I just bring my camera with me, we make something happen out of the blue, and then it just... You know, there's a good shot. All of them are unplanned, really. So you could say like that, photography is has become like a like like a sixth sense. Yeah. Like for you, like mm -hmm. it's something that you don't even really think about. Yeah. You just know when it's time to pull out the camera and, yeah. and take the shot. Yeah. Rarely do I ever sit there and really pose things. I literally just bring out the camera, snap it, and then I just see what I have when I put the SD card in. Really? Yeah. Well, then that's well. That makes sense because your your shots look so like natural. Like thank you. It was just like a you know, just a moment in time. It was like a moment of this continuum that yeah. you just like somehow captured. Thank you. Because and I think what makes it great is nobody else can like replicate what you did because mm -hmm. it wasn't set up to be replicated. If, mm -hmm. if that makes sense, I think exactly. it's great. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah, I, that's definitely something that I really. Like I've thought about that before. I like taking pictures that no one else can really create. Like that's it sort of makes my work or the intention of my work unique, at least. So, um, so with respect to like contemporary photography as a whole, do you kind of keep track of where other photographers' work is going? Um, are you aware of that? And if so, like, do you like where you know the urban photography is headed? in, you know, the direction it's taking? I do notice what other photographers do in a contemporary era. I think it's important, too, just to sort of see, you know, what's popular, what's the trend. But I also think it's important to keep, you know, your own personal integrity because um, it just shows the your, not only your personal character, but the character of your work, too. So while I do sort of keep track with this, like, urban, you know style photos, especially, you know, the topical photograph of a coffee mug in a four-star coffee house photos that you see everywhere on Instagram. It's like, okay, I see it and I get it and I think those are cool. Um, but I don't know, it's just not necessarily me. I just like to do um, photos that resonate with me more so, even if my audience or, you know, whoever looks at the photos and that's not what the trend is right now. It almost doesn't really matter. I think it just... I think it's important to sort of have this timeless um, view and this timeless sort of style to, to, to the photos. So you're not out to follow any trends? No, I'm not. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, and I, I have to ask because, mm -hmm. so I got interested in your work through a friend who brought, you actually shot his engagement yeah. photos and the shots are incredible. Like, oh, thank you. Like on a cliff, and yeah. I don't know how in the world, like, you got the, like, so when you're behind the camera, are you, like, fearless? Like, is it just something where it's like, I'll do anything for the show? <laughs> yeah, um, pretty much. I remember, um, yeah, that was, that was pretty crazy. I remember we were on the cliff, and I was on the cliff, too. I had to make sure I, you know, didn't step over the cliff, otherwise I would die. But I remember um, being at like Fossil Creek over in Arizona. I go there a couple times with my friends, and I remember um, 
uh, holding my camera like on a rock as the waterfall is just right there and I still got bent down you know and I took pictures of my friends jumping off and I don't know if it gets a good shot you gotta get it you know <laughs> are you aware of the fact like that you know a slip could you know bring yes. the end to all this <laughs> yes that's true but you know I think there's a healthy sense of paranoia and caution um because you know you you know what the good shot is going to be but you also sort of inherently know if you have good instincts hopefully you know sort of what needs to be done in order to take care of yourself and especially in order to take care of your camera which is honestly more important than me if I'm hurt whatever but if my camera's hurt <laughs> I get a little sad so so that that camera is like a third arm mm -hmm. it's like <laughs> yes it yeah it's more it's my precious third arm it's probably more important than my other arms honestly because I don't know. It's hard to replace. It's easy to replace, but it's it's sort of emotionally hard too. Well, was there like a learning curve with as technology gets better, the cameras mm -hmm. get better. There's new like you know ways to take pictures. I don't know anything about it. So is there like a learning curve when something new comes out? Do you are you like the first one to try it and try to learn it? Kind of. Um, I like to stay up to date on technology. Um, I think one of the biggest learning curves, honestly, right now, oddly enough and ironically enough, is the film camera. Film cameras are very difficult to use. It's very expensive if you do something wrong or if you open up the case and expose all your film, like, you're, you're screwed. So that is something that I really hope to get to know more of. The digital, I can look up on any YouTube tutorial. And they, they have some really great videos that I can sort of use as my go-to resource. But film cameras are an entirely different story. And I'm really trying to work on sort of learning how to use a film camera because I just love the photos that are produced from film cameras. So are you going to still try to use film cameras to take still pictures? Or are you going to try to do, do you do videos too? Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. are you doing? Yeah, I, I think I, if I'm going to do film, I'd probably just do photos first. Um... And then maybe if I'm, you know, advanced in film photography, maybe I can go into film video because that would be cool too, like especially like Super 8s and stuff like that. But. It's been great having you, Natalie, and thank you for your time for coming. Um, but we have to know, and I'm sure all your fans, the thousands that follow you on Instagram, would like to know, what is the next step for Natalie Allen? Well, um... I think now that school is going to be slowly coming to an end, I really want to devote my time before I settle down with a potential job and career. I really want to do like a big photo project and sort of what I have in the works this summer, this coming up summer. Um, I found this anthropology field school that is in the Himalayan mountains and basically you um, with a small team of of uh, trekkers and professors, you'd be trekking the Himalayan mountains to and camp several nights, and you would be interviewing uh, small Tibetan villages, and you'd be living with them for uh, several nights, and then you'd be continue going forward to northern India. And I really want to showcase um, that anthropology work with my photography, and um, I've just been, you know. Nothing solid right now, but that's sort of what I'm going towards. And I think maybe if I could get like sponsorships, you know, for certain type of brands and companies while I'm out there, because I'm going to be in the Himalayan Mountains, I, I think that that would be something that would be super cool. And just use this sort of photo project as a story and a narrative and a sort of um, socio cultural approach to photography that not a lot of people usually get to see and get to experience. And so being able to experience that myself and bring that to my audience, I think would be, I think would be super cool. But you know, so big like trips and photo projects like that, that have a goal, that have a purpose, that serve an intention is something that I hope to sort of continue on throughout the next couple of years before I hit down with my job or my family or anything like that. So